Okay, welcome back to another Between the Pages book chat. And today our guest is horror author Lauren Rhodes. And she's here to talk about her book, uh, This Morbid Life, which is a bit of a departure because it's a nonfiction book of essays. So um, the formula is going to be changed up a little bit today. And now I'm going to turn it over to her and let her introduce herself. So take it away. Hi, I'm Lauren Rhodes. Uh, this Morbid Life is my 15th book. Um, I'm the author of 199 Cemeteries to See Before You Die and Wish You Were Here, Adventures in Cemetery Travel, both of which are nonfiction and five novels. And uh, I edited a whole bunch of stuff. So I'm excited to be here today. And I'm excited to have you because um, I read a couple of the essays um, in the book and yeah, one of them was... <laughs> interesting <laughs> and one of them was kind of a uh, 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 nice little uh, insight onto the life in California with the wildfires anyway but anyway so give everyone a quick overview of the book what what is it about um, it's kind of a memoir in essay form so there are essays that I've written geez I think the first one was published in 92 something like that so over the last 30 years um, and they range from uh, spending a couple of days in a cadaver lab to uh, dealing with my dad's illness and um, my brother's death and just kind of the crazy adventures I get myself into uh, eating bugs at a, a science museum and uh, checking out, uh, I, I always forget what they're called in the real world, uh, Def sensory deprivation tanks and, and all kinds of things. So um, it's kind of a justification, I guess, of my curiosity because I it took me a while to realize that normal people aren't, aren't like this. Normal people just don't seek out the weirdest things they can do, but it's, it's been fascinating to do all this stuff. And, and I've been kind of gui uh, guided along the way by editors who've been excited to hear my stories. So I finally got them all into one place and the book's only been out two weeks today. So it's brand new. So, so why did you decide now to um, bring them all into a collection? Because I know you wrote a lot of these over the years for different magazines, correct? That's true, yeah. Um, there's an artist who does a lot of horror book covers and she did my short story collection last year. And I love her work. She she just works in all these different styles. So last October, she did a just this extravaganza of art where she created a different piece of art every day. And each of them was mocked up as a book cover. And you could buy them at a discount from her, her, her normal rates. Um, and I saw this piece of art and I, I just, I was shaking. I had to have it. It was so beautiful. And... Um, it's that one. It's a, a cadaver open to the ribs and the rib cage is full of butterflies. So it's um, vintage illustrations, which I love and medical science, which I'm fascinated by and all these things. And I, I wrote it right away and I said, I hope nobody else has bought this because I really want it. And then after I spent the money, I was like, I don't actually have a book to go with it. So I had to put the book together. It's it's something I've been thinking about for a while. Um, some of the stuff that's in this book was sold to a publisher in 2013 and was never published. The publisher just sat on the book and never released it. So I took it back eventually, added a whole bunch of new stuff, reordered everything, and, and now it's this new book. Okay, so you, you said this is a bit of a memoir as well so um but um, would you say there's a theme to it or is it just like a sort of a jumble of different memories and and uh, thoughts that's a great question um it, it they're all morbid i guess is the best way to do it um i've written a whole lot more nonfiction than fiction over the course of my career and so i'm I'm conceiving of this as a three book series. There'll be one book that's just the morbid essays, one book that's just travel essays, but also morbid, and one book that's just cemetery essays, which are also travel essays, which are also morbid. So um, 
I, this was the one I had to start with because it kind of lays the groundwork for the other two. But other than the fact that I'm in all of them because they're all first person essays, there isn't really a linkage. I mean, there are a lot of essays about death, but not all of them. So um, it's just morbid curiosity, I guess, is the thread. So what would you want, say you want readers to take away from reading the book? Um, that life is great, that every day above ground is a good day. Uh, if you get a little schadenfreude thinking, well, at least you're not eating bugs, then that's good too. Um, it's, it's a pretty dark book, but I think a lot of it is funny. And so I'm, I'm hoping that as people read it, they, um, they get to treasure their own lives that much more that, that they can just appreciate that, you know, this isn't the greatest timeline we're living on right now, but, but there's still a lot of beautiful, wonderful things about it. Okay. Um, when you're writing um, the essays, I know some of them, like you said, are, are dark. Did you have any qualms about publishing them or did you just want to share it? Well, Yes. <laughs> yes. There, there are a couple in there where um, I didn't read the whole book, like back, you know, one after another, back to back to back. I, I read each essay individually as I was collecting them and, you know, did the editing and all of that. And it wasn't until the very end that I, uh, I like to listen to the computer, read me the books because I can catch things so they don't find otherwise. And listening to them um, one after another, I was like, oh, there's a lot that maybe I don't want people to know about me. You know, maybe I'm being a little too honest or weird. But, but in the end, I just felt like all, almost all of these have been published before. And so, you know, my chance for modesty is past. <laughs> I might as well put it out there now. Okay, so, so you mentioned editing some of the essays. Did you have to do a lot of updating? Um, uh, and did you cringe a little bit at some of the prose you did earlier in your career? I was surprised. It wasn't too bad. Um, the first essay I had published, like ever, was the one about going to the piercing shop with my, my best friend. And um, it, it, I have a pretty straightforward writing style when I write the nonfiction. Uh, it's not very flowery or anything like that. So, um, so yeah, that didn't change too much. I mean, there were places where the phrases weren't as polished as I would have liked, but overall I, I didn't do very much revision, which surprises me. Were there any essays that didn't make the cut? There's one now that I wish I'd put in. Um, and I, I don't remember now why I cut it, but, uh, one summer, the museum that I grew up with back in Michigan had an exhibit that was called CSI Insects. And it was about um, corpse beetles and, and maggots and all that stuff, which freaks me out on a basic level. I do not like bugs. And so um, that meant I had to go to the exhibit. <laughs> That's the way I live my life. So I took my kid and there was a sign at one point that said, um, basically be warned if you go any farther than this. And so she and my mom went off someplace else and I did the rest of the exhibit. And there was a, a decal on the floor of a corpse decaying with the bugs on it. And so, you know, it was just a sticker. It was just two dimensional, but it was pretty graphic. And so I wrote about that afterwards that, that you know, I don't like bugs. I remember the first time I was reading a, a I think it was Dead Men Tell No Tales, written by a, a forensic investigator. And there's one whole chapter about bugs. And I was on the train going to work and reading it. And it just, you know, squicked out, couldn't sit next to people. It was awful. So I, I wrote about all of that in the essay. And then for some reason, I pulled that one out of the book. <laughs> so I don't think it's going to fit in the, um, the travel essay book. And it's definitely not the cemetery essay. So, so I don't know, uh, you know, that one was published probably 10 years ago. There's so. your little free reader magnet. Uh, that's what I'm thinking. You know, here, if you can get past this, the rest of the book will be a breeze. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm, I'm, 
pretty sure the people who don't like bugs might have a problem with it, but I'd find it interesting probably. But, but well, I, I, I like the of, forensic. I like the forensic science aspect probably yeah. of it. But so, um, what was the hardest essay in the book that you had to write? Bugs not included. Yeah, bugs not included. Um, the one about my brother's death was hard. I, I wrote it originally for uh, Morbid Curiosity magazine, which I used to publish in the late 90s, early 20, uh, 2000s. And um, he died suddenly. And so I had talked to him on Sunday. Thursday morning, my mom called and said he was dead. And, and I had no idea that he had even been sick. So um, going to the funeral home with all I know about bodies and burial and morticians and stuff like that, um, and seeing him was really hard. And, and I felt this weird disconnect because I've done so much study on this. It should have been not as difficult. I think, but, but I was just completely unprepared for him to be dead. And so, you know, I had basically, you know, it was one of those things where my mom called and I got on the next plane. So I, I had the length of the plane ride to kind of get used to the idea that he was gone. So that essay, both writing it and rereading it to put it in the book was really hard. Um, then I do a lot of my work now since the pandemic with an online group. So um, usually I leave my camera on because nobody bothers me and the, none of my family will come in the room while my camera's on. And so, um, I was reading it and it was still really emotionally difficult. And, you know, then I realized that I po quite possibly had an audience that, you know, the other writers were writing, they weren't paying any attention to me, but, um, that was kind of a, a strange moment, difficult. But I, I think it's a good piece. And I think, you know, even people who don't go to mortuary colleges on tours and stuff um, would go through the same sort of emotions. So I think it's it's a universal piece. So I kept it in the book. Yeah, sudden death is, I mean, even when you're prepared for someone who's dying, it's, it's a hard thing. So. Well, it's just people who are younger than you should not die. That's yeah. just weird. So. Did you get a chance to read the Cadaver Lab essays? Those are some of my favorite. No, samples. I only got a chance to read a couple of them because, okay. you know, my yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't give you more time. Yeah, but uh, so uh, do you have a, a favorite essay? I, I really like the Cadaver Lab pieces. Um, I, I started out, I, I had a friend whose brother was a gross anatomy lecturer. And so I started out by thinking, uh, you know, in ninth grade biology, I, I didn't pay attention the way I wish I had. And, you know, we dissected animals and I didn't really explore, you know, solve my curiosity as much as I should have because I was squicked out and it's still horrible. But um, so I, I was talking to him about could I get a fetal animal to dissect in my kitchen? Um, and the more we talked, he said, you know, I have cadavers in my lab that I teach on. Why don't you come up and I'll show you the bodies. We'll go through them. And, um, oh, I made myself sick with worry beforehand because, you know, I, I didn't want to cut people open. Just the whole emotional thing about choosing to interact with these bodies was really hard for me. And, I mean, to the point that, I said, let's, let's go to the cemetery and explore because cemeteries are my happy place. So we can go, we can look through the cemetery. And, and after we'd done that for a while, I'm like, well, I came all this way. Can we at least, you know, go to the lab and I'll, I will have gotten to the school at least. And uh, we ended up spending two days, basically long story short. And the end of the second day, he put a human heart in my hand and it was a religious experience. You know, my dad has had heart disease my whole adult life. And so seeing what a human heart really looks like, seeing how small it is and how powerful it is, and, you know, it's just dense with muscle and air. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have a sip of tea. 
<clears throat> you know, a heart is, it's just chambers, right? With muscle around it. And um, to, to have that experience of, of feeling a human heart was nothing in my life as compared to that. I mean, that was really intense. And, and so the essay, I, there was two essays I wrote about the cadaver lab, both of which are in the book. And, um, and I hope I get some of my excitement across to people because potties are really cool. You know, they're really complex. They're like these puzzles where everything is just fit in there. And, and I'm sorry, I go on and on, but it, it really, it, that, that's my favorite part of the book. Yes. I think every horror writer and, and mystery writer is now going, yeah, we understand that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, is there anything, uh, any essay in the book that you are particularly proud of from a, a writing standpoint that you just nailed? I'm happy with the, uh, the fire season essay because it was one of those where I wasn't sure what I had to say. Um, but, you know, after I got to thinking about it, I was dealing with fire season before we even moved here. My, my best friends and mom live south of San Francisco. And uh, he was watching the news one day and watching there was a fire in her neighborhood coming toward her house. And she couldn't get out because the fire trucks had blocked the only road in and out of the neighborhood. And so she was out there with a garden hose, wetting down the house in the garden, you know, waiting for the fire to come and planning to jump in the swimming pool if she got trapped. And that was more than 30 years ago. And since then, you know, there've been the big fire in Oakland and the uh, fire that leveled Santa Rosa I have a friend who's a horror writer who was chased out of her house up there and luckily nothing was burned. But then last year during the fires in Santa Cruz, another friend of mine lost her house, lost everything. And so it's just been this ongoing thing where the you know climate change is getting worse and worse and worse. And um, I had edited a book for my local HWA group called Tales for the Campfire which raises money for uh, victims of the campfire up in Paradise. Paradise was a little town like the one where my friend's mother lived, where there were very few roads in and out. And once the fire came, people couldn't get out. So they, a lot of them abandoned their vehicles and just ran off into the woods because it was that or sit in the car and die. So they died in the woods, but, um, just a huge number of people lost their homes, lost their jobs. The entire town was, was wiped away. And um, I wrote the fire season essay as a way to promote that book, to bring awareness to the book. So I'm really proud of all that work, the, both the editing tales for the campfire and writing fire season. Okay. So one last question before we wrap it up. Okay. Um, what um, from your life, because these essays are your life, have inspired your fiction? Oh, my goodness. Well, the, the anatomy lab story led directly to the story Valentine, which is in my short story collection, um, because my, the my main character in that story is a witch who's trying to get a heart for her, uh, for her teacher who's dying of heart disease. And so I got to write about, you know, cutting somebody open and reaching inside their body and grabbing their heart and all of that. And that, so the research was already done, you know, uh, but there are a couple of things like that where, you know, being a writer gives you a license to ask any question you want and, uh, and then you go and write about it. So I try and I, I don't know if it's repurpose things, but I try and write about it from a a nonfiction standpoint and then fictionalized too. Okay, That's a great so, question. <laughs> okay. So uh, I'll let you tell everyone where they can find you and your books. Then. My home on the web is laurenrhodes.com and I have kind of a weird spelling. So uh, you could see it right there under my name. And uh, at this moment, this moment life is just available on Amazon. I'm, I'm having trouble with the distribution stuff this time. So eventually it'll be on bookshop.org and uh, Barnes and Noble, but for the moment, just Amazon. 
Okay, so thank you for being here. It was a pleasure chatting with you as always. Thank you so much for having me back. And um, that's it for today. And uh, between the pages, we'll be back next weekend. No, we will not be back, I don't think. Or will we? Okay, Maybe. it's next weekend the 12th. If next weekend the 12th, we won't be back. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because I have another panel next weekend. I, yeah, I, I'm confused. I've been confused. What is time anymore <laughs> yes exactly but i don't think we'll be back next weekend but we will be back the weekend after with another guest so join us then anyway so that's all for now so bye <laughs>